The 2021 Major League Baseball season had one of the weirdest scandals in the history of the sport, and it was because of pitchers cheating over the past 50 years. Pitchers blamed the league office for injuries, dropped their pants in the middle of the diamond, screamed at opposing managers, and even found new ways to get suspended, all while having the lowest opponent batting average since 1968. And it's all because of this stuff right here, which Trevor Bauer said gives a bigger advantage than steroids. Now, before that other stuff, I need to address what this spider tack stuff actually is, and it's a sticky substance that people use to lift up extremely heavy rocks in other sports. Have you ever used spider tack while pitching? Um, I don't... I don't know, I, I, I don't know if, uh... I don't know quite, I don't quite know how to answer that to be honest. Now, the reason why this stuff is bad is because it's against the rules of MLB, mainly because it gives the pitcher an unfair advantage over the hitter, resulting in less offense, and that's never what baseball actually wants. The reason why this stuff is so effective is because of a term called spin rate. For those of you that are unaware of what spin rate is, it's just how many times a baseball spins in the span of a minute. And the general rule of thumb is, the higher this is, the harder it is to hit a baseball. In May of 2021, before MLB decided it was time to step in, league-wide spin rate was at an all-time high due to sticky stuff. Doctoring the baseball is a practice that is actually one of the oldest ways of cheating in the book. The spitball was banned in MLB over 100 years ago. Not only did pitchers literally spit on the baseball to make balls move in funny ways, but they would also scuff up a baseball with whatever they could. Joe Necro, a former pitcher for the Minnesota Twins, even brought a nail file onto the mound to scuff the balls to get that extra movement. However, this sticky substance was fairly new, at least popularized within the past 15 years before the crackdown in 2021. One of the biggest players in making sticky stuff mainstream was a former Angels clubhouse manager named Bubba Harkins. Harkins learned about pitcher grip enhancers from legendary closer Troy Percival during his stint with the Angels. And eventually, Harkins was being asked from players all over the league to make them a batch of the sticky stuff. In 2019, Garrett Cole wanted some of Harkins' magic, so he texted him a little bit like a middle schooler saying subscribe to pesky talk and like the video because this is a great channel just kidding but still do it he actually said hey bubba it's garrett cole i was wondering if you could help me out with this sticky situation the stuff i had last year seizes up when it gets cold can you come up with or do you have a mix that will play better in cold weather this one text alone gives us two incredible pieces of information about the scandal the first being cole was at least using sticky stuff since 2018 and Second, it was known that Bubba Harkins was the Major League Baseball foreign substance expert. However, after 31 seasons as Angels clubhouse manager, he was fired in March of 2020 for his involvement in sticky stuff. Before the change came about, however, one of the most controversial figures in the sport made his stance well known about the subject. Trevor Bauer hated sticky stuff, and in 2019 he tweeted, In six years of testing, I haven't found anything that increases spin naturally besides throwing harder. If you want to cheat, then get Pelican Bat Wax. It's been shown to increase spin 300 RPM in a game even with decreased velocity. Bauer also said in an interview that he suspects over 70% of pitchers are using some form of sticky stuff at the MLB level. This was alarming because if Bauer was right, it would mean that hundreds of pitchers across Major League Baseball were all cheating every time they stepped on the mound. In 2019, Bauer claimed that if he were to use sticky stuff, he'd win a Cy Young Award, but refused because of his morals. However, his morals must have caved later that offseason because by 2020, his spin rate had increased by almost 250 rotations per minute. And if you take the information that he tweeted just a few months prior, you'd know that this increase in spin rate was due to foreign substances. Okay, okay, so the spin rate increased, but how did that affect Trevor Bauer's performance in terms of runs allowed? Oh, he won that Cy Young he said he'd win the offseason before, with a 1.73 ERA compared to to a 4.48 the season before. Okay, maybe this stuff is pretty effective. With Bauer officially breaking down the walls of MLB's rulebook and literally forcing their hand after his 2020 dominance, it's finally time to talk about 2021 where everything changed for sticky substances. Major League Baseball decided to go about this entire thing in the single worst way possible by pretending like they cared in spring training and then jump scaring everyone involved by seriously enforcing the issue starting in the middle 
middle of the season. Truly, this was the worst way they could have done this. They had made a light memo at the end of March saying how they were going to track spin rate on baseballs from StatCast and whatever. None of it mattered, but in June, they immediately went full force on keeping foreign substances out. A few days after the ban, a couple of pitchers got injured, including Rays pitcher Tyler Glass now in his first start after the crackdown. He blamed his injury on having to grip the ball harder to get the control that he'd lost while not being allowed to use his sticky stuff. 100% believe that contributed to me getting hurt. Uh, no doubt. And before that start, I remember when all this stuff came out, I was talking to people and talking to doctors and they were like, the thing that maybe MLB doesn't realize or that players don't realize is like, what, what is the prevention of like, maybe it'll add to injuries. And in my mind, I was like, that sounds dumb. That sounds like an excuse a player would use to make sure he can use sticky stuff. But I threw to the Nationals. I woke up the next day and was like, I am sore in places that I didn't even know I had muscles in. Glass now brought up a few important points with this quote, with the main one being the injury concern from doctors, and if it actually contributed at all to his injury. The unfortunate part, however, is that injuries are complicated, and also pretty random for the most part. There are many factors that can lead to an uptick in injuries for major leaguers, whether it be throwing harder, different pitches, or even amount thrown, these can all factor into an increase in injuries. Along with that, in 2023, there was also the issue of another new change in the pitch clock. Since the crackdown of sticky stuff, overall, there has been a decrease in pitching injuries compared to the 2020 season and earlier. Take the beginning of the 2021 season, for example. There were seven Tommy John surgeries in just the first two months of that season alone. In 2023, there were seven total. These charts also show there haven't been much of a jump in injuries for pitchers the month after the sticky stuff ban. And even with foreign substances, the injury rate was already at an all-time high. I think it's fairly safe to say that maybe Glasnow's injury, which did lead to Tommy John, may have been from losing grip. However, he's more of an outlier than a trend. Injuries weren't the only thing that bothered pitchers at all. The way of checking for substances made the pitchers even more upset. At the very beginning, pitchers were having their fingers checked almost every other inning to make sure that there was no substance on their fingers. And when this first started happening, pitchers hated it. This led to a good amount of extremely silly interactions where pitchers just turned into a child for a few seconds. No one exemplified this more than Sergio Romo, who literally untied his belt and pulled down his pants because he was so bothered with a substance check. Max Scherzer probably hated the checks more than any other pitcher, and this was because of an opposing team's manager for the most part. On June 22nd, less than 20 days after after the substances were banned, baseball was blessed with probably the greatest outburst in the history of checks. Scherzer was checked once early in the game, which was standard for the time. Then, Phillies manager Joe Girardi requested another check after a strikeout on Alec Bohm. Scherzer complied, but was obviously extremely bothered by the check. But that was just the beginning of the issues. The next inning, Scherzer had a clean inning, and while walking off the mound to his dugout, he stared daggers at Girardi. Girardi obviously got extremely offended that Scherzer was bothered by the checks and ran out of the dugout to attempt to confront the player. Scherzer just walked into the dugout and took off his hat and glove to ask the umpire if he should be checked for a fourth time. There were a few other moments that were just ridiculously awkward involving these checks, like a year later when James Karinchek had his hair checked for substances. In the umpire's defense, he was going to his hair before almost every single pitch, but the amount of time it took for him to check was absolutely absolutely insane, and he never even got ejected, meaning the umpire found nothing other than sweat in his hair. Another extremely weird situation happened a month later when Joe Musgrove had shiny ears, so the Mets decided to ask the umpire to check his ear to see if it was due to sticky stuff. The umpire then had to go over and massage Musgrove's ear, and it was found that he did not have substances on his ear. Maybe the most insane check happened in May of that season, where Madison Bumgardner was stared down aggressively while the umpires rubbed his fingers for way too long. This led to Bumgardner getting pissed off and eventually ejected. It's safe to say that pitchers hated these checks, but so far I've basically only mentioned the moments that are more funny rather than actually problematic for the sport. But how have these rules actually been followed? Pretty well actually, at least at first. There have been a handful of players who have been suspended due to umpire checks finding sticky stuff on the pitcher's fingers. The first of which 
was Mariners pitcher Hector Santiago. Since then, Robert Suarez of the Padres was also suspended. One of the players who originally hated the substance checks, who was also talked about heavily earlier in this video, also got suspended for sticky substances, and that was Max Scherzer. Scherzer was very upset and claimed that the stickiness was caused due to sweat and rosin, which according to the rules is actually legal. Well, unless the umpires declare that the hand is too sticky, which I don't really know how you can justify too sticky or not too sticky, but they try anyway. Yankees pitcher Domingo Herman has also had two different encounters with sticky stuff, the first being in April of 2023, where the umpires allowed him to go and wash his hands before coming back out to pitch. And then the second, just one month later, where he was ejected and suspended as the umpire called his hands the stickiest he had ever felt. Manager Aaron Boone mentioned how difficult it is to draw the line in what is too sticky and what isn't in his post-game comments. Apart from the logistics not really working out in terms of rosin and sweat getting too sticky, I think that the foreign substance crackdown was overall a great thing for the sport. Offense is doing better, hit by pitch rate isn't too much higher, there have been very few suspensions, and even though spin rate is slowly climbing back up, I think the results have been a success.